What's up, folks? What's going on? Welcome to the Spun Today podcast, the podcast that is anchored in writing, but unlimited in scope. I'm your host, Tony Ortiz, and I appreciate you listening. I really hope that this episode finds you all well with the ramping up and craziness of this coronavirus pandemic that's, I'm sure, on everyone's minds. It's definitely on mine, especially being here in New York, which is currently the epicenter of the country, and then New York City, to be exact which is the epicenter of New York State, and then Queens, which seems to be the epicenter of New York City. I know at least a half dozen people that have tested positive or have been directly affected. One of my wife's coworkers, three of my wife's family members out of Massachusetts, my best friend, and Spun Today podcast alum, Stephen, who's been on. Shout out to him if he's listening. But I am glad to report that all are doing well. And I'm sure we'll pull through. Aside from that, I hope you all are heeding the warnings and advice of places like Johns Hopkins, the CDC, so that we can help curb the occurrences, the spread, and the negative impacts of this virus and not reach levels that have been reached in countries like Italy and Spain and China. I want to give a very special shout out as well to the folks in the front lines fighting this battle which are our doctors and nurses and hospital staff, our police officers, National Guard, military personnel. And shout out to our postal workers and UPS and FedEx workers that are allowing those of us that are able to stay home to order the essentials that we need. And they're the ones that get it to us. Even the restaurant delivery personnel. Very special shout out to each and every one of you. Thank you. And I'm definitely proud of the political leadership coming out of New York, starting first and foremost with Governor Cuomo, who is fastly becoming and being known as America's governor, quote unquote. Cuomo has the remarkable ability to express the urgency of the situation while reinforcing calm. And he's clear, concise, and I'm definitely proud that he is leading New York State and feel a bit more at ease knowing that he's at the helm of the state. He's a Democrat with balls and principle, and definitely not the type that is so far progressive that they don't realize that they're tyrants in and of themselves. And I really think he's doing a, a, a great job in terms of leadership and bringing folks together. It shows in the acknowledgement and adoration that he's getting from across the country. The only way this comes back and bites us in the ass is if... The bozo that's in the White House starts getting jealous over this shit, over the shine that Cuomo's getting, which would not be surprising. It sounds like the possibility of that would be some like juvenile high school bullshit, but that's definitely not the case. He's already taken some shots at Cuomo, saying things like, oh, they must be hoarding the respirators that they have, and the PPE equipment must be going out the back door, and they're miscounting. Which is all AK making excuses for not acting as fast as he should have acted. Which I got into a little bit more in the episode a couple weeks ago. I could definitely picture Trumpito throwing temper tantrums when the camera's off. Oh, America likes him better. I'm going to show him. I'm not going to send him what he wants. Fucking slime ball. Cuomo 2024. Mark my words. You heard it here first, folks. Probably not first, but you heard it here. Shout out as well to Mayor Bill de Blasio, who's always getting shit. And he is a Democrat that I particularly like, even though he does lean a little bit too progressive um, at times. He usually is butting heads with Cuomo on certain things, which they started to butt heads in the beginning of this while things were still ramping up. But they seem to, you know, put their, you know, I don't want to say petty bullshit aside, but in comparison to what's going on, they put you know, petty bullshit aside, and they are obviously working very well together, now moving shit forward. So shout out to him. And not for nothing, a a bit of criticism that de Blasio got was him supposedly jumping the gun and saying that, you know, we should be completely locked down uh, across the board. And, and, you know, Cuomo stepped in and said that was uh, him being a bit too alarmist. The city doesn't have the authority to do that anyway, something that would have to come from the state, etc., but fast forward, uh, you know, a few days up to a week later, and de Blasio was right. You know, it's pretty much where we're at now. Things continued ramping up. I don't want to say that things obviously would have been better if we would have locked down sooner. But 
it seems like he was right on that and throughout this whole thing that's like the biggest criticism that uh, i've been hearing about about the blasio but yeah folks i hope you're keeping safe and well check out episode 148 of the podcast where i got a a little deeper into the whole coronavirus thing as it was unfolding then i definitely plan to revisit it in uh, a week or two but i wanted to break up the monotony with this episode drop another free writing session and give you lovely folks something to listen to something to hopefully enjoy something that's hopefully a bit motivating for you during this quarantine and with that let's get into it this is episode 149 of the podcast and in this episode i share my february 2020 writing stats a writing tip that i picked up along the way and i tell you about what i've been reading finally i read and reflect on a couple of my free writing pieces which can be found at spuntoday.com forward slash free writing but before we get into it here is a quick way that you can help support the show you know that feeling that you get on a monday when you're sad because the weekend is over and you have nothing to look forward to except for lunch have no fear the midday monday boost letter is here and you might be thinking what is the midday monday boost letter sounds like a mouthful and it is but it's also more than that i put together this absolutely free newsletter that i email to all my subscribers every monday at noon to spread a little joy and happiness If you choose to subscribe, all you have to do is go to spuntoday.com forward slash subscribe and drop in your email address. And what you'll get is five things. You'll get a photo of the week, which who doesn't like looking at dope pictures. You'll also get a podcast of the week. I listen to dozens and dozens of podcasts every single week from a wide variety of shows. And I cherry pick the very best ones and share them with you as my recommendation for that week. Also in the Midday Monday Boost Letter, you will find a video of the week, which could be anything from a cool online recipe that I found, to a rap battle, to a TED Talk, or a dope interview. I also share a quote of the week, a little food for thought, as well as a word of the week for my fellow wordsmiths out there. Again, this is all absolutely free. And you can get my newsletter by going to spuntoday.com forward slash subscribe. Drop in your email address and you will get the very next one. Alrighty, February 2020. I wrote 14 out of the 29 days. Damn leap year. Fucked up my my percentage there. If it would have been 28 days, it would have been a bit higher. But that is a total of 48.3% of the days that I actually wrote and worked on writing stuff. This month, March, is not over yet, so I'll share those figures with you folks next time. But I think I'm on pace to maybe even a little bit less than the 14 that I did uh, for February. A little bit less or like floating right around that, that range, that like low teens range. A silver lining of this whole coronavirus quarantine thing though is that i definitely have more time and the ability to dedicate more time to writing so i should be able to uh, raise those numbers up a bit and i'd say that like i feel like a broken record i think i say that like every fucking month like no matter how good or bad the writing stats are like i always want them to be better which i guess is a good thing but i don't know if a fucking pandemic that locks you in your house can't get you to write a little bit more than i don't know what the hell can All right, and here is the writing tip that I picked up along the way. And if this is your first time listening to one of these free writing session episodes, I typically try to share at least one writing tip that I pick up from either a podcast or a writer that I follow, whether it's like one of their newsletters or a blog post or just some insight that I feel can be applied to writing that resonated with me that I plan or am implementing myself and I'm sharing so that you folks can do the same if you wish. And this is one of those. This tip came from James Clear and his newsletter from January 16th, 2020. And it's three tips for getting started as a writer. So you're getting three in one today, but it's kind of all like a little 
package deal. Number one is publish on a schedule. Consistency develops ability. I could definitely attest to that. And I need to implement that more in terms of writing. I mean, my loose writing goal is to write every single day, but I stick to that about 40 to 60% of the time. So adding some structure in a schedule that I can stick to even more, I'm sure would help benefit because, you know, pre quarantine, when things were, were normal, my writing schedule would roughly be wake up at 5.30 in the morning, write for about an hour, and or do like podcast-related work or website-related work or set up some social media posts for, for the day, etc. And I would also write on the subway while I was uh, commuting to work. And then in the evenings after my wife and, and son go to bed, I would do some more. And it definitely helped to have that structure, although it was like a bit loose, carved out and verbalized, at least to myself, that, you know, these are the times that I'm going to be focusing on writing, etc. These are the available slots to focus on writing. But what I wanted to say is that I could definitely attest to it in terms of podcasting. For example, I've been producing this podcast for a bit over five years now, every other Thursday, without fail. And that definitely speaks to publishing on a schedule, to the fact that consistency develops ability. And I know this obviously isn't the greatest podcast in the world. I have zero delusions of grandeur, but I do know that from episode one to episode 149, I've developed my ability as a podcaster from self-teaching the nuts and bolts of it on how to even produce a podcast how to record a podcast, how to use a mixer and a microphone and all the stuff that I didn't know from Adam before I started the show to formatting different types of episodes like the Random Rant episodes, the short story audiobooks, the free writing session episodes like these, working with my mixer to up my sound quality, using programs like Levelator, and just taking a breath of the podcast world, if you will. So that consistency helps me develop or helped me develop that ability over the past five years. So applying that tip to your writing definitely seems like a worthwhile pursuit and something that I know I myself can benefit from. So it's three tips for getting started as a writer. That was number one. And number two is share your writing publicly. Writing is a magnet. It attracts like-minded people. And I couldn't agree more. It's partly why I started these free writing session episodes to share my writing publicly via a different platform that's not my website or my books. And also to give me a chance to read and, re- and reflect on my own writing again publicly and hopefully get a dialogue going and, and feedback from you folks. The alternative is and was for me that you are a quote-unquote secret writer you know you write for yourself you write in notebooks that you never show anyone you write right on the computer and it doesn't move forward from there and it's not to say that you have to you know commercialize your work your craft your art if you don't want to you don't have to but sharing it publicly for free can be a route that you take it's a partially route that i take i you know sell my books but I also do offer them for free. If anybody, you know, reaches out to me via email, spun today at gmail.com or through the contact page on my website, I'll for sure shoot them over a free digital copy. I've done it in the past. You can also purchase my books, you know, hard copies of the books or uh, the Kindle version on Amazon. I have free promotions for, for my books the whole time, but they are for sale, right? There's a, there is a commercial business-minded make money aspect to being a writer but this podcast for example is completely free my website everything that's on it is completely free in terms of the short stories and the writing the free writing like the posts that i'm going to read today and you can do just that version if you like you know just put your stuff out there which i think is the right thing to do because something that i'm big i'm big on that is not you know, an original thought of mine, but it's definitely one that I subscribe to, is that once you share your work, it's not yours anymore. 
once it's out there, it belongs to the people. Of course, the IP is yours if you want to be technical. But what I'm referring to is the impact that it has, the spark that it can give a different individual to maybe even think about something that you didn't even intend from something that you wrote. But they interpreted it a different way, took it around with it, and you help that way. You can make somebody that needs to laugh, laugh. You can make somebody that needs to cry, cry. You can provide some pastime entertainment. Who knows? The point is, put it out there. And the third tip of the three tips for getting started as a writer is write about what fascinates you. You don't need to be an expert. Curiosity leads to expertise. And this is kind of like that fake it till you make it type of mentality. I appreciate the part of you don't have to be an expert, uh, but just be curious about it and, and write about something that fascinates you. You don't want to have paralysis by analysis, which has happened to me, and I'm sure it's happened to many of you. And you need to get over that hump. You need to follow your curiosity, learn as you go, research as you go, but don't get stuck in the research and then wind up just researching forever and not writing anything. I learned that from different as well, you know, from this quote, obviously, but also from different podcasts that I listen to, like Joanna's Pen, Creative Pen Podcast, different blog posts, books like Stephen King's On Writing, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art, um, taking a master class now, Margaret Atwoods, which is the, the writer of The Handmaid's Tale. And they all have similar stories in that they're not necessarily the end all be all experts in these stories that they chose to pursue and write it was something that interested them something that fascinated them and that fascination and interest is going to keep you motivated to write the story throughout when it does become monotonous and you start getting writer's block and you start getting sick of your own story because you you're like reading it and rereading it margaret atwood's uh handmaid's tale for example one of there were a couple a couple of things that led her to write that story but one of the things that planted a seed of writing that story was her going through some of her mother's old things after her mother passed and she had like an old newspaper from i think she said it was from like the 20s or the 30s or something like that and there was a request for a handmaiden like in some classified section and like that's where she gets the name from and then the iconic outfits that they wear in that series both on the tv show and the and the book it was a doodle that she got from something, I think some sort of like box or she saw it somewhere. She doodled it and she just changed the colors around and colored it red. That's definitely not a knock on her. You know, ideas come from all sorts of different places and I'm not trying to belittle it, make writing seem like, oh, it's this like easy f- fleeting thing because it's definitely not. And it's one of the, to quote Joy Diaz, easiest, hardest things that you'll ever do especially when you get into the monotony and the the technicality of it. But it's important to also not lose sight of the fact that and mythologize writers as being these absolute experts that study a certain time period in society for 30 years and then sit down to write a brilliant work of art. And they do it in one fell swoop from word one to page 300 where they type the end with no grammatical errors or mistakes or, you know what I mean? Like it's definitely not that either. So for sure it helps to write about something that fascinates you and you do not need to be an expert. Don't think that you need to be an expert to pursue something that you're curious about. And that is, those are the writing tips for this episode. Again, coming from the James Clear newsletter from January 16th, 2020. What I've been reading is Ben Shapiro's book, The Right Side of History. I finished that a couple weeks ago now. And for those of you that don't know, Ben Shapiro is a conservative. He is a pious person. He's religious. He was an attorney that went to Harvard Law. He is a political commentator and has a YouTube show called The Ben Shapiro Show. There's a bunch of clips online. Now, Shapiro's definitely a conservative guy. He's Jewish, practices, and I apologize in advance for my ignorance, but 
that thing where Jewish folks can't use electricity or like take elevators or anything on Sunday. I believe it's the Sabbath, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's like a one, like a holiday out of the year, or if that's what it's called when they adhere to that practice every Sunday. But anyway, I just say that to say that, you know, he's not typically the type of person or personality that I lean towards. Although I do enjoy listening to his show when I do, uh, I've heard him on, on podcasts in the past. I like his point of view on things, not on everything, obviously. But I do definitely think it's important to listen to, quote, the other side. When you feel that you believe one thing, it makes sense to me to factor in the viewpoints and ideas of the opposite or or an alternative view point to your to your own. You might learn something new. I also believe it improves uh, critical thinking. It opens up pathways in terms of uh, patterns in the way that you think, perhaps. I know it has for me. And I think, generally speaking, it's more wise to know and understand other viewpoints than your own to truly be able to reevaluate your own ideas and, and takes on a situation and also see if your ideas hold water. Instead of just thinking, no, I, I'm right because this is what I've always thought. And a, fu- a funny point about Ben is that even though he is a Jewish conservative person and he has gotten berated for being so, he has also been called a right-wing Nazi. So it's like you can't win with folks, right? And again, it goes back to what I was speaking about before at the head of the show where sometimes it has a lot to do with folks' interpretation of what it is that you put out there and not necessarily the intent behind what it is that you put out there. Now, one of my favorite things about the book and biggest takeaways is that Ben takes a deep dive into showing how we got to where we're at today politically by going back and revisiting, really laying out in a comprehensive way how the religion and philosophy and ideals and concepts of folks like Voltaire and Socrates and Descartes and Machiavelli and others borrowed from each other and each other's concepts, they built upon them and evolved their own ideas. And he really showed how they are all connected, how they all, at least how they all overlap and inform each other. And I remember while while listening to the audiobook, I made a mental note of this is definitely something that I want to revisit because it's such a bird eye view that it's worth the second listen and maybe even the third, who knows, just so I can grasp more of it the second go around. And the other thing that I want to share with you guys, the other takeaway from this book is how he ended it with a, what I thought was a thoughtful story about his daughter asking about his mortality and if he's going to be around when she's older, etc. So this is a bit of a spoiler alert because I'm going to share a small clip. So in case you want to save that for when you actually read the book, uh, feel free to skip ahead uh, about a minute and a half or two. I don't tend to be much of an emotional creature, but having kids changes that. One evening, recently, at bedtime, my daughter turned to me and asked, Daddy, will you always be my daddy? Surprised, I answered, of course, sweetheart. But, she clarified, one day I'll be older, and really old people die. So will you still be there? I felt a catch in my throat, because naturally she's right. I don't like to think about death with regard to my own parents, let alone with respect to my children. And while I'm a believer in the afterlife, there's no real way to know. I don't know what comes after this. Nobody does. I put my hand to her hair and stroked her head. Yes, baby, I answered. Mommy and I will always be there. We'll always be your mommy and daddy. I turned out the light and left the room. Then I sat outside her door and thought about how much I loved her and how one day she'd face all the tough questions we all face. And I thought about how I would answer those tough questions for myself. In the end, are we all orphans? Are we bound to lose all those we love and live and die alone? Are we specks blinking in and out of existence, leaving no trace? I don't think we are. I think that the history of Western civilization shows that our parents live on in us. That when we accept our past, 
when we learn the lessons they teach us, when we recognize their wisdom, even as we develop our own, we become a link in the chain of history. Our parents never die so long as we keep the flame of their ideals alive and pass that flame along to our children. After I knew my daughter was asleep, I sneaked back into her room and kissed her head again. She was asleep. I know she probably didn't feel it, but maybe she did. And that maybe is all we can hope for, all we can strive for. It is our job to carry on the tradition. It is our job to push the task forward. If we do, then we will be truly deserving of God's blessing and fit to proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. We will choose life so that we and our children may live. I thought that was a pretty dope story and sentiment for him to share in the book. So I wanted to share with you folks. And again, that is The Right Side of History by Ben Shapiro. I will link to it in the episode notes, along with Ben's uh, YouTube show, The Ben Shapiro Show. Y ahora a lo que venimos. And for my Hispanically challenged folks out there, I pretty much said, and now... The moment you've all been waiting for. Just not in so many words. It's time to read and reflect on some of my free writing that can be found at spuntoday.com forward slash free writing. Full disclosure, these are two pieces that I shared on the podcast about three years ago. But in keeping with the advice of folks like Governor Cuomo and comedian Andrew Schultz, that have been really advocating to, you know, find the silver lining in these tough times and try to make the best out of out of your quarantine and get to reading that book that you've been putting off that you always say that you're going to read and you never do. Get to writing that book that you've been wanting to write. Watch that show. Write that script. Paint that portrait. Embrace your creativity. So in that spirit, I dug in the crates of the Spun Today free writing session, and I pulled out two pieces that I feel could possibly aid you in that pursuit. And the first one that I'm going to share is titled, Like a White Light Going Through a Prism. And I posted that on the website on September 16th, 2017. But it's actually a piece that I wrote a few years before that in 2014. And if you'd like to read along, I link to it in the episode notes. Like a white light going through a prism. Whenever inspiration hits you, it's probably not a conscious decision. It's more of an epiphany. Let it take its course. Let it ooze out of you in whatever form or medium it takes. Express it however it wants to be expressed. Release it. Let it out. Don't trap it, bottle it up, and allow it to go stale. Don't harbor it and, quote, save it for later. It won't be there later. At least not in the same way that it it was. And the best part? It's infinite. Ever-expanding. You couldn't waste it if you tried. Ride its wave and elevate yourself. And possibly even others for doing so. How great of a plus is that? So whether it's a song, a quote, a book, a line in a movie, an instrumental solo a laugh, in anything that gives you a momentary glimpse into the self-perpetuating purity that is inspiration, embrace it and run with it. Because although the stream can't be wasted, the moment can be. Like a white light going through a prism and coming out of the other side as an array of different colors. Allow it not only to enter you in that unexpected form, but also... Allow it to come out of you, expressed in its intended form. And I wrote that on Sunday, February 16th, 2014 at 12.02 p.m. A lot of what comes out in these free writing sessions for me is a flow state, a stream of consciousness, a pen to paper and write whatever comes to mind. And when I do that, it's cathartic, as I've shared on the podcast time and time again. It helps detangle things in your mind. And I truly do believe that it's sometimes, sometimes you do have like lightning in a bottle moments, not necessarily of, you know, the next greatest thing since sliced bread, 
you know, writing piece or, or idea or whatever, but something that is fleeting in that if you don't capture, if you don't get it down on paper, if you, you know, quote, save it for later, like, like I say there, it's just not there later. You forget it. You know, it could be an idea for a character, an idea for a line or story. And you're like, oh, I'm definitely going to remember this in the morning because you don't want to get up out of bed to jot it down. And then time and time again, the next morning comes and you don't remember shit. Then you're kicking yourself about it. So I'm speaking to those type of moments. Well, at least that's what I'm getting from this piece right now as I'm, you know, reading it back. And I speak to how those moments come and go. They can definitely be gone. You can definitely waste those. But the stream of it, of inspiration, of motivation is always there. You just have to tap into it. And sometimes it taps into you. And when it does, in those times that I that I reference, like an instrumental solo or a line in the movie or a quote or something that sparks some sort of momentum within you, it's absolutely on you to act on that. And if you don't, when you don't, know that you're running the risk of never having that specific moment again. And the fucked up thing is that you never know what those specific moments can become. Like Margaret Atwood, for example, that we were speaking about before at the beginning of the show, would she have had the idea for The Handmaid's Tale if she wasn't going through her mother's old belongings after she passed? Or take it a step further, when she did have the idea from reading that classified, when that seed was planted, what if she would have treated that moment like, ah, I'll, re- I'll remember that later, and then just never got back to it? So I hope this piece not helps you find inspiration because inspiration is technically around you all the time. I hope it helps you see the inspiration that is already around you. More importantly, it helps you to remember the importance of acting on it and doing something about it when you do feel that inkling of inspiration. And again, that post is like a white light going through a prism. And last but not least is follow your unique light. I posted that also on September 16th, 2017 to the website and similarly wrote it a few years earlier in 2014. And here it goes. The combination of thoughts, experiments, and experiences that it takes to be you in this realm is irreplaceable. To allow fear and insecurity to blanket the innate selfishness that is not expressing yourself is a disservice to your evolution as a person and to your influence on the evolution of others. How dare you take that cowardly route? Be you 24-7, 365 and 366 in the leap year. And don't you ever look back, at least not in a questioning or resenting way. We shouldn't have a choice in the matter. Let the light that's inside you shine through. Let it light your path, the path that is only walkable by you. It's okay to find yourself and figure things out by going through different experiences in life, but it's not okay to find solace and comfort in one of those experiences and pigeonhole yourself into it because of a sense of security among all else. Shake things up a bit until that sense of security that you're searching for is implicit and just part of the package deal realized by the second nature feeling that is living your dream. Follow your unique light. And I wrote that on March 23rd, 2014 at 12.03 p.m. All right, I uh, think I went a little bit hard on the how dare you take that cowardly route. We shouldn't have a choice in the matter portions of this piece. <laughs> but um, that aside, I get the sentiment of it. Kind of ties into what we were speaking about before in how your actions, ability to put yourself out there through your work, through your art, can help and impact others. If you take the quote-unquote cowardly route, which I don't necessarily think I would call that that now, but if you take the safe route of not putting yourself out there and not pursuing something that you're passionate about for whatever reason, because you you have a family to look after and you don't have time to dedicate to this thing that you're passionate about because you you're working two jobs and trying to put food on the table or you know fill in the blank whatever the reason is 
that doesn't make you a bad person, obviously. And everybody's circumstances are different. But in a very general sense, the lack of pursuing what it is that you're into never winds up having the potential of impacting and helping and sparking it in someone else. And I also appreciate the last sentence here, which is shake things up until that sense of security that you're searching for is implicit and part of the package deal realized by the second nature feeling that is living your dream. Meaning that sense of security that oftentimes can turn into a false security because you're you know, technically assuming somebody else's risk. That sense of security that you find comfort in, shake things up by following your dream, by following a dream of yours and immersing yourself in it to the point that that feeling, the way it must feel of truly doing what you love, that becomes the number one thing. And the whole security and safety piece of it just winds up being part of that package deal. It just winds up being part of that experience because you are putting the living your dream on such a high pedestal and loving it and being fascinated with it and working at it and making it work to the point that the security comes with it eventually. Or at least that's how I envision things eventually becoming once you guys share and subscribe to the Sponsor Day Podcast, share with all your friends and family and purchase tons of my books to also share with your friends and families for their birthdays and Christmas and all that good stuff <laughs> so that I can turn this part-time hobby into a full-time hobby one day, right? Anyway, folks, that is the episode. That is episode 149 of the Sponsor Day Podcast. I hope it helped break a bit of the monotony of what's going on and I hope you folks stay safe out there. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's social distance. Let's stay clean and vigilant. And let's get past this. Listen to some tunes in the background. And then to a few ways you can help support the show if you so choose. Peace. folks tony here and i hope you're enjoying the show as much as i enjoy putting it together for you if you'd like to support i'd really appreciate it and we'll give you a one-stop shop of sorts on how to do so if you can make your way over to spuntoday.com forward slash support you'll find a bunch of different ways where you can do just that there you'll find an amazon banner similar to the other banners found throughout my website that you can click on and will take you to Amazon where you can do your shopping like you normally do. This will not cost you anything extra and Amazon will pay me a percentage just for driving traffic to their website. It's a great way to help support the show financially without actually having to come out of pocket. 
at sponsorday.com forward slash support. You'll also find links to my Patreon and Kofi pages. Patreon and Kofi are two similar websites where you can set up reoccurring donations for the show. If you want to donate a dollar per month, a dollar per episode, a hundred dollars per episode, whatever you like, you can check out either one of those two services there. There's actually also a Patreon video that's kind of like a little tutorial explanation video of how Patreon actually works. Also at spuntoday.com forward slash support, you'll find a direct donation button where you, you can donate by way of PayPal. You'll find a link to Apple Music, which works similar to the Amazon banner. You can click on it. It'll take you to Apple's website where you can do your purchasing like you normally do. And again, it does not cost you anything extra, but I will get paid a percentage just for driving traffic to their website. And you'll also find links to the Spun Today viral style store. This is where you can get Spun Today related merch. And you'll find things like these cool premium t-shirts that have uh, writing related things on them that I put together myself. I'm definitely not a clothing designer by any stretch of the imagination, but I put together things that I wanted to see in and uh, wear myself. A couple of my favorites are the one that says writing is life and another one that says right need every day and it has like a puff of smoke looking design right behind uh, those words. You'll also find a spun today coffee mug and a really cool color changing mug that's related to my debut novel Fractal. It's completely black and when it gets hot when you put in coffee or tea it starts changing to white and it also exposes the cover art for my novel fractal it's pretty dope so definitely check all that stuff out which again you can find by going to sponsory.com forward slash support and of course do not forget to follow me on all of your social media at spun today on twitter at spun today on instagram subscribe to the spun today youtube channel where you can find clips and excerpts from the podcast along with other cool content like the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash spun today. Also, don't forget to check out all the free shit that I have on my website as well. Go to spun today.com forward slash free writing. And there you're going to find dozens and dozens and dozens of free writing pieces that you can check out for motivation and inspiration and just some general food for thought. You can check out some of my photography at spuntoday.com forward slash photography. Feel free to take any of those pictures and use them as you wish. I set it up so that you can like copy and download the photos. And my short stories are available at spuntoday.com forward slash short stories. And last but certainly not least, my pride and joy corner, spuntoday.com forward slash books. Here you will find my published books, which you find folks can find links to purchase them on Amazon, whether you want hard copies or digital uh, Kindle copies. That's the spot for you. Thank you very much for being a Spun Today listener. And as always, substitute the mysticism with hard work and start taking steps in the general direction of your dreams. Thanks for listening.